Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 29. Today is August the 22nd. I'm feeling really, really empowered. I'm feeling empowered today because, first of all, I would like to thank every one of my viewers, my new subscribers. I would love to thank those who have taken the time to find this podcast very helpful to them. Please hit the like button so that you can receive notifications of Chronicles of a Nonprofit podcast, specifically when we go online to do an episode. Um, Today, we're going to talk about some things that involve just becoming an entrepreneur and building one's self and getting ready to provide steps to becoming the empowered entrepreneur. Um, Not the wannabes, the ones that really want to stand out and really, really, really want to empower others to say that I am that I am. I am that one that has done the work, that has included, you know, the certification. And I'm not something that's just under the table. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do, I really, really want to get into the demographics of um, who's actually watching these videos. Now, as of this week, I had a support from the channel, Chronicles of a Nonprofit, 809 people viewed and tuned in to the podcast. So as you are listening here, there's an algorithm that's taking place here on this podcast platform. And then I'll upload it to YouTube and more people will get empowered by the information that's being shared. And we had 111 likes, so we so thank you. Um, People shared the information. We appreciate you. You know, we value that because that means you're getting help from the information and you're sharing it with the people that may also need this information. Even if you don't need it in entrepreneurial practices, you may need it in another part, in another place in life. So these topics are not just for business, it's for, you know, whatever shows up in life. Um, And then also, we played a little game, and the algorithm asks, what the second most popular location that my viewers are watching my podcast? South Africa, Switzerland, or United States? And guess what? I thought it was South Africa. Um, because I know it's United States, so United States is the number one, but the second most popular location that our viewers are listening to this podcast is in Switzerland, and that is my place. I've always wanted to go to Switzerland since sixth grade when I um, had to do a country and do research on that country. Switzerland was the country that I chose. So let's move right on into the information that I think could be very vital and helpful to you. So what do you want to do when you want to be an effective leader? Um, We do not want to wait on others to train us to get prepared for that. We should be training ourselves We should be motivating ourselves, reading books, uh, getting articles, putting ourselves in a position that we are going to run into those people who are going to be moving in that direction. Effective people take effective actions and they make it happen. They make it happen. Entrepreneurs don't wait around for someone to come and say, oh, it seemed like this should be needed You have such potential, you should know. Entrepreneurs go after what it is they want because effective people become empowered just by the things that they see around them. They know that inside there's a burning fire that they know is something that they should be doing. They recognize that, right? So you feel a confidence. You feel the ability to go after research 
and find resources that's going to help you accomplish the goals and what you're trying to pursue for yourself. Trying is not doing. Doing is doing. Actively making sure that you are going to get exactly what's needed in order for you to move forward. That's what entrepreneurs do. Empowering enables one to get things done. Let me give you an example. So I have these degrees and I have these associate programs and certification that I've constantly practiced over the course of my career. And as being a leader in the field of leadership internationally and nationally, my Rolodex tells exactly what I have done. So I always felt that it would be a show off if I were to put all my titles up and have it behind my desk. And, you know, people would, you know, make me feel like, oh, you know, she's just a show off. But little did I know the reasons for titles are to separate the entrepreneur who has done the work from those who have not done the work. So basically it's saying to them, to their client, potential client who walks into their building or their office or whatever, this is who you're getting. You're not getting this representative. Yes, I understand that I have it all within me. I understand that my portfolio is as big as probably Chase Bank's portfolio, but what I want to do is not intimidate. And so what I did was I never put up my titles. I never put up my certification. But now I'm seeing as I'm moving towards that area, my leadership is elevating to another level. And it's not about bragging, but it's about the rights that I've gotten to where I needed to be in order to do the things that I'm doing. And so as an entrepreneur, you will eventually come into your own and where you feel that it's time to upgrade, it's time to put into a position something that is going to make you stand out. So when others come to you, thank you, CC. When others come to you, they're going to say, oh, she set out from the rest. She's not the, every, the average everyday individual who's just holding a key to a building and faking it to make it. This is a true entrepreneur. This is a true businesswoman. So empowering yourself enables you to be a great entrepreneur where people are going to look at you and they're going to get motivated by what it is that you have already accomplished. So now I'm going to take everything out of the the, the portfolio and I'm going to make myself this beautiful mural of all my titles, not to do anything but to explain to others who I am, both educationally, academically, professionally, and physically. This is who I am, spiritually, mentally, morally, ethically. These are the philosophical ways in which I think. So it will give that client, that potential client, the ability to know who they're facing when they walk through my doors. And I want to take responsibility for learning what I need to learn. And I don't expect others to teach me what I need to do. I am grateful for the opportunities for plant seeds to be planted and for the ideas to run through options to help me see what makes me greater. So entrepreneurs rarely suffer from a lack of academic or intellectual skills. They're going to have those skills, but they need the practical skills. That's what I was hiding all the titles for. So people will understand the practical parts of why and the intricate workings of what I do when I do what I do. It's very valuable because... (laughs) What happens is they see, oh, how does she know? How does she know? They, They may think it's just something that's just popping in my head and I'm just freelancing or freestyling. 
But no, it's actually academically triggered. It's practically triggered. Now, social media sometimes will make a person able to be intellectually communicative. They can communicate on that level if they study hard enough or fast enough. If they're a fast learner, they can manipulate a system. So don't get it twisted. You know, I was told that I was a paranoid professional. I don't believe that. I think that's another way of trying to def defame my abilities to do what I do. I'm very practical. I am very versed when it comes to protecting what I have worked so hard to achieve. So when I look at younger entrepreneurs or people who are in the process of becoming their better version, one thing I realize is that communication skills are highly effective, highly important, and it's valued. So no matter what we've learned, no matter how quickly we learn it, no matter what's going on, practice is the key. Practice is the key. Sometimes practicing can be the difference between an investor investing in your business and your dream and your, your goal versus you having no money starting off on a business concept. Someone came to me with a wonderful idea, and it's something that I really want to consider. And it's up to them to make the decision on how they're going to present it to me. I'm not going to do the work. They're going to do the work. I'm going to see, because when you do the work, the potential client, when they do the work, they normally stick and stay. Most who want the work done for them, they're at that point where they're undecided. Because if it gets too hard for them, guess what? They're going to push away. Initiate action. Move. Don't wait for others to give you the, the focal point. You just start moving. If it works, you're successful. If it doesn't work, you throw it in the trash and start another, another successful journey. But you never, ever, ever expect anyone else to motivate you because they're going to fall to the wayside. And my grandson always says, you snooze, you lose. <laughs> when you wait on someone else to do what you are supposed to be doing for yourself, as an entrepreneur, you are wasting time and time is money. Don't forget about those competitors. And it's going to take some risk. You're going to have to think and motivate yourself to say, Am I important enough to have faith in myself to where I can do what I need to do? Set prerequisites for yourself and say, I'm going to get through A, B, C, and D before I move to the next level because I need this in order to shine my brightest when I move to level one, basic skills level. I need to do some research. I need to know what it feels like to be this type of director. I need to know what it feels like to call myself a director. There are certain things I better have, credentialing that I better have. And it's not just a, you know, X amount of years of experience in this business, but no LLC. X amount of years in working with your sister or your brother or your mother and not having a associate's degree, at least. Okay? Um, having an LLC, but having no portfolio. Nothing to show who you are, where you've been. You always want to put the blueprint right there in front of your potential clients. And then always have extensive amount of library books on the topic in which you're about to embark in. If you want to be a chef, you better have some chef books on the platform. You better be, you know, flipping through and learning everything that it needs to be a chef. Everything that you will need to be a chef. Do they have to have certification? Do they have to have a degree? 
Do they have to have a managerial license? Do they have to have a safe serve certification? What does it take? And these are the key statements that are going to make you stand out from the rest. And get ready for the psychological, you know, part. You're going to need to train yourself to be psychologically comfortable with being confident and picking yourself up when you fall, picking yourself up when there is fear, picking yourself up when you, if you're a engineer going into school for engineering, nine times out of 10, you will tell that the engineer will become an engineer if the engineer is doing things that engineers do. And also find ways to keep going. You know, sometimes we allow things that are, you know, fearful to throw us off of our game, to, let, to make us lose confidence. But what we got to do is realize we have to step back and see how far we've come. Look at the progress in which you have made. And this is why I think that it is a kind of like something mandatory to do when you are a certified entrepreneur with certification and degrees to be able to put those things on the wall. I don't care if it is a GED and you've successfully completed that program. You want to put that up on the wall so others will understand that you're not just someone who does not know the basic skills that it takes to just run something higher than whatever it is you're doing. You know, a GED for some is like a college degree because it took everything for them to get through that. And that is beautiful. And I want you to realize that that is an accomplishment that you should be extremely proud of and you should go for it. You should put that up there and, and that should motivate you to move to the next level. We all should be moving to the next level. Keep your energy up and never give up. You know, we fail in business. I fell so hard. Back in 2011, I couldn't believe it myself. I said, oh, my God, how did I fall this far? <laughs> but that failure made me the success I am today because now I know the pitfalls. I know the games. I know the jokes. I know the way that people play the game when it comes to setting others up for failure. And it's that resilience that brings you back because you were going to want to complete the journey. That's all you know is the journey to succeed forward. So you're going to do it. Whether the pay is, you know, you know, whether the pay is acceptable or not, the passion is going to be there. The money will always show up. Guaranteed for everything that you think you need in this life you will always be compensated for because you're doing things from a passionate perspective, not because you're trying to make a million dollars. Now, if you're planning on making a million dollars, then you go ahead and you do what you do, but you're going to have to be at the whim and the, and the, the pleas of those who have power over you. You know, <laughs> you're going to have to, excuse me, I was um, burning some branches today at my one location. And um, so the branches were not as dry as they should have been. So it caused a little cough happening with me. But um, thank you, Chief Finley from the fire department for teaching me the differences between a dry branch, seasoned branch, and a branch that still has moisture. It's still alive, it's still breathing, and it's breathe, breathing a different way. I learned that today. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. But um, so being resourceful is one of the alternatives that we can have when life turns our dreams topsy-turvy. When things go up and down, we don't know. We're, we're about flexibility, creativity, 
um, moving through barriers and empowering ourselves to be the best that we could possibly be. Because in this movement, you're going to learn yourself more than ever. And that is the power potential of a, a powerful entrepreneur. And that's what I want you to understand. And the younger we are when we're getting into the entrepreneurial practice, the more mistakes we're going to make, but the more we're going to be longer, our longevity is going to remain. Because have you ever had someone in your life tell you, I've been doing this for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. And if you've been doing it that long, you're not going to be as apt to make mistakes because you're learning as you're growing. You're learning as you're moving forward. And that's the key that I want to leave with you today. And I want to empower you that if you are even thinking about starting your own business, organizing your portfolio for yourself while you are just imagining, maybe I can just, you know, create my portfolio and start the book, start the book of my life to show someone how far I've gone. You go back to the drawing board. If you've gotten a certification at six years old, sixth grade, Going to seventh grade, your report card means everything. My portfolio still has my high school uh, transcripts in it, my college transcripts, you see, my dissertations. And these are important factors that we need to always make ourselves our greatest version, even in the midst of what am I going to do next? You know, and and like I said, a coach is not there to take responsibility for the success in which you've empowered yourself and let no man, woman, child, no one take away the ability that you have believed in yourself to the point where you've gotten yourself to where you are, to where they gain the credit that they need in order to make you feel some kind of way about defining your success. That is not their right. No one has that right. Not even a husband, a wife, no one. (laughs) You know, and it brings me to the movie Waiting to Excel when Bernadine told this man, I've been with you 11 years. I sacrificed. Yeah, she sacrificed, but at her own expense because he's not even responsible to his own wife to stay there and make her make him feel guilty of what he chose to be successful with. Success is a selfish, self-centered perspective that you yourself put upon your life. That's it. And no one, not mother, not father, not sister, not brother, not cousin, not teacher, no professor, no doctor, no one can take that success journey away from you because you've earned it. And don't allow a professional bully to think that they have the right to take that from you. Why? Because those days are over. It's kind of like being back in the slave mentality. But the massa is no longer the slave master. The massa is the mentor. (laughs) That's a bunch of crock. Do you see it? Do you see it for yourself? If you start taking accountability and responsibility for your next success journey, you're going to be fully ahead of the game. And you're going to be doing things where people are just on at you at the very last thing you did. And you're on the 10th thing ahead of that. You're so far behind that. that that's a that's an old dream back there. They they're just now realizing that you did it. Keep them in awe like that. You know, entrepreneurs, keep them in awe like that and never, ever let anyone know your dream until you've actually visioned it, seen it and started working on it to the degree that if they do try to sabotage, guess what? You're so far ahead of the game, it'll never happen. And surround yourself with people who are not jealous, envious, 
uh, but surround yourself with people who have your better interest at heart and test those people. Test them to see. Make sure that they're approved to be in your circle system. And with that, I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to this podcast, Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I am Dr. Dorena Shine. Sometimes I'll say I am Dr. Shine. Sometimes I will say I'm Dorena. Sometimes I will just say, hey, I'm your host. So, you know, titles don't affect me like that. But if for some reason it affects others, I'm not always going to say that because I know who I am and I am that I am. And with that, I want you to be who you are and never let a title, you know, um, distract you or keep your ego twisted so much until you can get knocked down from the pedestal that you've worked so hard to be on because people will find the weakest link in your chain and pull it. Peace. I thank you for being here. Thank you, Switzerland. Thank you, United States of America. Thank you, South Africa. Thank all the viewers that are in this podcast with me right now. You're wonderful. You're awesome. And I go live every now and again, but I try to keep all, I don't schedule because I want people to just listen and I want them to get this information firsthand and then I want them to go back and meditate upon this information. And then from that meditation, I want them to journal. And then after the journal, I want them to go back and reread what the journal stated and then put it into action. That's what I want. And that's, the, that's how I did it. And that, those are just some, you know, seeds that I want to plant here tonight to say that you guys are my greatest versions of what an entrepreneur could potentially be. So go out there and be the best. Peace, and I'll see you next time.